Well, hi there, everybody. I'm Abby from Abby Kirsten Collections, and welcome to my craft room. Today, I'm going to take you on a detailed tour of my craft space, and I'm going to show you the best ways that you can stay tidy and organized in your creative space. If you're anything like me, your craft space is probably constantly evolving and changing, and more accurately, getting very messy and then trying to get it tidy and then messy again, and the process repeats itself over and over again. And that's just part of the creative process. You have to get messy to be creative, but being messy doesn't mean we can't be organized along the way and doesn't mean we can't know where things are at or know how to get things back in order rather quickly, which is what I'm gonna show you today with how I do that in my process in my studio. So you might have a small craft space, you might have a medium sized one or a larger one. I've worked in all sizes. When I first got started, I had a very small little corner of my dining room that I worked in. I eventually moved up to a little tiny office space and then a bedroom and then eventually I got my space which is here, which is an upstairs loft area. And even though it looks rather large, it's actually not all that big. It's smaller than the person's average size living space, living room area. So I also want to mention that you need to visit my blog post that I have written on this specific video below in the video description because I have resources and links to point you in the right direction if you want to buy any of these things that you're seeing here for yourself. So let's start with general storage. Behind me here you see this pegboard. I absolutely love my pegboard. One of the reasons I love this so much is because not only is it an inspiration, you should be inspired by your craft supplies. So not only is it an inspiration, but it keeps the clutter off my desk. Before I had a pegboard, all of these little containers here and things were sitting all along the top of my desk. And I'm sure some of you can relate to that. And it takes up so much space. For me, your desk should have the project you're currently working on and maybe a cutting machine or whatever your primary craft um, you know, workhorse might be, mine is a cricket, but that's what should be on your desk. Other than that, your supplies should have a home elsewhere. And I think that's really key to staying organized when you're in the middle of a project. So what I love about the pegboard here is that it has all these little accessories on it that you can store small items in. So it has these little containers here that slide out and it has these little um, trays that you can set things in. Now I purchased my pegboard at Ikea and that is the most popular place that most people buy a pegboard like this, but there are sellers on Amazon that sell very similar pegboards and visit that blog post like I said because I do have those links for you. Um, but if you just go to Google even and start typing in white pegboards, you should see some options come up for you. And each brand is going to have their brand accessories to go with the pegboard. So if you're loving what you see here, then you'll want to check out the Ikea brand pegboard. The other thing I absolutely love about this is over here on this side, I have these little, um, they're actually file or paper holders, but I use them for vinyl. So I have tons of vinyl and I have some more vinyl storage ideas for you coming in this video, but I like to have my most predominantly used vinyl right in front of me, um, right above my craft desk. So I love to use iron-on glitter vinyl a lot. So I like to keep those right above my craft space, right above my desk here. So I use these, um, these file holders here to just slide the rolls right on top. So it also looks really pretty. Um, over here we have accessory storage. So there's, once again, these are accessories for this specific pegboard, but I love to store all of my Cricut tools, like my weeding tools and rotary blade and um, Cricut scraper here on my pegboard. So once again, that that stays off of my desk and I can clearly see what I have and I can grab it quickly when I am crafting. So you can really see how amazing owning a pegboard can be and how it can keep you organized. I'm going to turn you over this direction now so I can show you some other ideas. So over here on this side of my wall, I have hung up my mats. So mat storage is really important because you don't want to just leave them anywhere if you have a cutting machine like I do because you can get dust, dirt, other craft materials stuck to them and then you can't use them as well and you have to buy new ones more frequently and that's just expensive. So I love to use simple command hooks and hang up my Cricut mats like this. And you can put them by color or just, you know, hang them up at random. I just get the large size command strips and I've had up to, let's see, this one has about eight mats on it. This one down here has eight mats. So it holds well and I can have a lot of mats hanging on it at once. So this is the way I absolutely love to store my mats because it keeps them dust free and over here. And um, I of course always save my 
little plastic topper that comes on your mat to place back over when they're in storage so that dust doesn't stick to it in case they're hanging there for a long period of time. So that's how I store my Cricut mats or if you have anything similar like this, like maybe a, a self-healing mat or some other sort of cutting mat, you could also store them like this. So over here to the left side of my pegboard, I have again a couple more shelves like I mentioned. And I have these really cool paint storage containers. Um, you can find these on like Amazon, I think Joanne sells them too. And if you have a lot of paint, and again, this is really aesthetically pleasing to me, so I like to put this out here where you can see it. This makes really great paint storage. So I can clearly see everything I have and I can put it right back in its spot and its home really quickly so I can stay organized mid-project and I'm not shuffling around trying to find things that I'm looking for. You might also use the shelves for placing any other random items that you like to look at or use frequently for me. It's my glue gun. If you love that glue gun, it is my favorite. It is by Surebonder, and I'm gonna link that in that blog post for you. It is my absolute favorite glue gun, and you can find out why in the blog post. Next, I wanna talk about containers. There are a couple different containers I tend to gravitate towards for really optimum storage. So here I have what is called a bell jar and an apothecary jar. Now these are glass. You can find some that are plastic. Um, I just like the look of the glass ones better. Obviously you wanna be mindful of uh, where you're sitting those so you don't break them or if you have little ones around like I do, I keep them up on my higher shelves so that no one can grab at them easily. So I absolutely love apothecary jars for storing spools of ribbon. I like to use ribbon with some of my paper flower designs or I'll use them for photo props when I'm creating crafts for you guys. So I love to keep my ribbon organized um, around these wood spools and in an apothecary jar. I have resources for the wood spools and for the apothecary jars in that blog post that I mentioned. These here are just some really pretty stackable bell jars. So what I love about these is that I can um, take them off and sort of create a smaller one or you know stack them higher like I just had a second ago here and you can put a lot of different things in here right now I have paper flowers in them um, because I make a lot of paper flowers and to me it's just kind of a aesthetic item in my craft room but this would work really great for small storage things too like beads or um, you know ribbons or anything like that that's small that you might need you could absolutely put here maybe spools of thread if you like to sew a lot um, so these can be used very useful for a lot of different reasons so next I'm going to show you some of my plastic storage containers Okay, next up is plastic storage. So I absolutely love clear plastic containers because they are really great for keeping small miscellaneous items organized together. And the fact that they're clear, you can quickly see what is inside without having to open up a box that wouldn't be clear, digging through it, and then maybe missing what you're looking for or not being able to find it. So I have resources for all of these once again. Um, a lot of these containers are by M Design, just the letter M. I still have the label on it, M Design, um, and they have lots of different shapes and sizes that will work really great. I love these square ones here because you can stack them and then I put them in my closet and they just keep things organized. So there's just a lot of random things here um, that maybe are not as aesthetically pleasing to the eye, so I don't really display them out here, but we still need practical storage. So that's where I use a lot of these plastic containers. They make different ones that are more oblong like this and inside they have little slots to keep things organized. So I have some more ribbons stored in here. And they make smaller ones such as this one here. I have a bunch of pins and um, hair pieces here for making like, you know, barrettes and things like that for crafts. So I store that that way. And they also have lots of different shape containers for various things. So if I'm in the middle of a project and I have to stop something and come back to it, I like to keep my um, project in progress kind of organized. So I love using like little containers like this to keep a current project together and organized so that I don't lose any of my pieces or they don't get like, you know, ruined or anything like that. Um, I also love using these plastic apothecary jars. Um, so they make some plastic ones as well. They're really great for storing items like beads or spools of thread and ribbon and all that good stuff. This one over here is by Deflecto, and um, I love this because it pulls right out like so, and you can store a lot of things in it. Um, I have tape and some um, pearl stamens in here and some wood beads and some things like that. So I really love this. I have this linked for you as well in the blog post. What I really like about this one is that it has the ability to actually put it on a wall. So they've created little screw hooks here you can actually hang it on the wall 
So if you have extra wall space and you don't want this sitting on anything, you can hang it up too, which I think is really cool. So paper storage is a really big deal for me, especially because I do so much with paper crafts and paper flowers. There's been two primary ways that I love to store my paper and I've tried a lot of different ways and for me, this has always been the best methods. So first and foremost, if you don't have a ton of paper, let's say you only dabble in some paper crafts, I love to use magazine holders. Magazine holders can hold hundreds of sheets of paper. I only have four here and there is hundreds of sheets of paper. So this is a really great way to organize by color, have everything very accessible. Um, these are just acrylic um, magazine storage. The Container Store has them, thecontainerstore.com. Um, Amazon has them. You can buy them in different you know, styles and colors as well. So absolutely love magazine holders for storing paper. My second method for storing paper is I love to use paper storage containers. So these containers here have been specifically built to where they are um, 12 by 12 on the inside of the drawer so that whether you have smaller size paper or you have the large 12 by 12 scrapbooking sheets, you will be able to stack your paper in there. This can hold probably a few thousand sheets of paper just for the one drawer here and this one has like nine drawers in it and I have two of them here. So you can hold thousands of sheets of paper in these um, paper storage containers. Michael's Craft Store has these a lot of times. I got this rainbow one at Michael's Craft Store and you can also find them on Amazon as well. All right, so next up, cart storage. I think craft carts are one of the most best efficient way to store a wide variety of items. So I absolutely love these. They are called origami craft carts. Um, Home Shopping Network sells them. Um, I think you can find some similar ones on Amazon and I'm gonna give links for that in the blog post. Um, if you have more than one cutting machine or you have a small space and you don't wanna keep your cutting machine on your desk, then these are really great for stacking cutting machines on or even um, heat presses or the Cricut Joy machine. And then they have all these wonderful drawers down here that you can store small items in. So I keep a lot of like deco foil and glitter and some Cricut blanks for t-shirts and things like that. I keep all that stuff in these drawers and I stay really organized with them. I also really love my rolling craft cart. So this one is really great if you need an extra bit of space next to you somewhere and you, you, know, you need to be mobile. So oftentimes I have a lot of stuff on my craft desk and I need somewhere to set my computer or my glue gun or something off to the side and this rolling craft cart is really great. I purchased this one from Michael's Craft Store and it has a great little space to work on here and it also opens up on the side and expands so that you can have a longer space over here as well and then it collapses for more compressed storage. At the bottom it also has drawers that pull out so you can store a lot of things in and this really handy shelf that allows you to stack additional containers and things like that as well. So next up we have my wall of vinyl. If you have a lot of vinyl like I do, um, this is a really practical way to store this. So I've just taken a basic bookshelf. You can buy these at Ikea, Amazon, Wayfair, lots of places sell just these very standard basic bookshelves. And I've used these slide out containers here and I have stacked all of my vinyl in these containers and they easily slide in and out of the shelves just like this so I can quickly find anything that I'm looking for and I've also organized each container by type of vinyl. So I used to use a basic bookshelf and some of these containers here, which I will also link in that blog post. Um, it's just a specific size that I purchased from that M design that I mentioned a little while ago. And I have an entire organized bookshelf full of my vinyl now. So what if you don't have the space to do a big bookshelf? Well, I absolutely love these decorative storage boxes from Michael's Craft Store. They have new patterns on these that come out every year. They had a whole bunch of rainbow ones come out recently. So of course I bought a bunch of them. Um, you could use these for paper storage and for vinyl rolls. You could use them to store projects and things like that. So if you need something a little bit more small and efficient that you can stack, try using some of these decorative cardboard boxes. They're really pretty to look at and they can hold a lot of stuff. Um, they make them in all different sizes. So I have this one here. This one's actually filled with glitter. So I do some tumblers sometimes and I filled this with a bunch of glitter because one of my drawers over there is already too full so it becomes secondary glitter storage. You can also store rolls of vinyl in these carts like I mentioned earlier. Um, so these drawers work really well for storing vinyl and paper in them as well. 
So let's talk for a second about desks. I'm going to show you two desks. This first one is the one you've been seeing in the video so far. This is my primary craft desk. And I purchased this from someone on Etsy. You can purchase desks and tables from a million different places. I'll give you some resources in that blog post. Uh, but I purchased this one on Etsy and it's actually a wood top with a metal leg for the frame. And what I did here is I actually purchased a photography vinyl backdrop that you may use like in a studio when you're taking pictures. And I uh, purchased it with a um, marble print on it. And I just wrapped it around the wood top. So the reason I do this, and it might seem a little silly to some of you, but for me, the reason I do this is because I wanted that look of marble without spending a lot of money. And I also wanted the ability to protect the top of my table and change it whenever I needed to. So if I use this um, vinyl backdrop for a year and then I've gotten too much stuff on it by you know accident mid crafting or from you know photographing something and I get it messy, then I can just purchase another one and wrap it around the top of the table again. So that's just a little hack for you if you're on a tight budget and you have an old maybe dining table that you could repurpose but you want it to look a little prettier, try buying a vinyl backdrop. You can find them on Amazon and Etsy and um, I'll link some resources in that blog post for you. And just wrap it around the top of your wood table and you have a brand new tabletop and it's that simple. And it's also a lot easier to wipe down because vinyl is usually food safe and spill proof. So if you get things on it, you can easily wipe it off. So lastly, over here underneath my desk, I have a repurposed dresser. This was actually my son's dresser when he was an infant and I was getting ready to throw it out and I thought, I wonder if this will fit underneath my desk. And it did. So all this empty space that was sitting underneath my desk has now been utilized with this dresser. I just painted it to the colors that I wanted, put some new handles on it, and now I store a whole bunch of things in it and it holds a lot because there's six deep drawers. So I have infusible ink that I keep in here and some canvases and some more paper and mats and all that stuff, types of stuff. I want to show you my sewing desk on the other side of the room now and then we're going to wrap this up. All right, so the last side of my craft room over here is my most newest addition, and it's my sewing desk area. So I showed you my desk just a few moments ago over there, and I wanna show you this desk as well. This is a lower desk, um, so I would use a chair with it. And I purchased this top from Ikea, and then I purchased these shelves down here from um, Ikea as well, and my husband put casters on them and then mounted this top to them so that I have four cubbies on each side, and then I have this nice tabletop. So I have some good storage down there with the cubbies for fabric and things like that. And then I have this tabletop to work on with my sewing machine, which I keep on the top at all times. I also have this spool organizer here, which you can buy on Amazon, and I have everything organized by rainbow color. And then up here we have another pegboard. This pegboard is on Amazon, so if you don't wanna buy from Ikea or you're not able to for any reason, you can check out this pegboard that's on Amazon and I'll link it for you in the blog post. Um, so I love this one because it's a little bit smaller and it's great for a space like this when you don't have a lot of wall space. Um, and it has these little boxes here and these little shelves that I can keep things organized like my bobbins and scissors and rotary blades and some fabric and everything like that. So this is just my little sewing area here. And um, you can absolutely make a desk for yourself very easily by purchasing a simple top and some cubby storage and creating a little space for yourself as well. So you've pretty much seen everything that there is in my craft room. I would love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know your questions. Make sure you visit that blog post that has resources for all of this. And I also have some really fun craft room printables to keep you organized. So I want you to go and download those too so you can make sure you keep your craft stash organized. I'd love to see what your craft room looks like. So come over to our Facebook group and share it with us there. I'll see you there. Bye for now.